Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Haven't posted one in a while, but we're now continuing the Fizzbone series is what I'm going to call it. So hopefully we can get through this as smoothly as possible. I'm actually going to be updating an old video that I made on how to add objects into Unity. And there is a couple reasons why I'm updating this video, despite some people may have already seen it and be like, well, I already know this. It's one for the people who don't know that and have been in introduced to Unity during the Fizzbone section of all of this. It's kind of crazy because Fizzbones became a huge new update and a lot of my videos pertaining to dynamic bones became irrelevant and confusing to a lot of people. So I want to make sure that my videos are still relevant and understanding. Second reason is that there are more things that I want to add to this and explain to people so that you can expand upon previous knowledge or maybe just learn something new that you didn't know before. So if you did watch my previous video and that is all that you know, then I can guarantee you, you may learn something new in this video. So without further ado, let's get into the basics. I'm using Unity 2019, the newest VR chat up SDK, which does not include dynamic bones. This is strictly fizz bones. The avatar I have here is by Duck, link in the description below. And in a further in a video, I'm going to be using some fluffy ears by APR, which since they are a separate asset and will not be in the credits for the avatar, I will also link down below. So now let's get into the details. So let's say that you have a set of ears on an avatar or some ears that you want to change. And you're like, I want to be able to add my own ears or my own objects into Unity so I can have it customize it to myself. I don't want to do Blender work because Blender can be very hard, which is understandable. This is an alternative way to adding objects onto an avatar, which can vary from a lot of things, which I'll explain here in a second, without having to go into Blender. Now, forewarning, this is a lot less optimized than adding things in Blender. This is not me saying this is the best way to go about it. This is me saying it is an option, a way to go about it. If you are looking for more optimized ways of adding things to your avatars, I definitely do not recommend following this video because this is unoptimized. If you are inexperienced with Blender and optimizing any sort of asset itself, I would recommend looking for assets with lower poly counts and lower material counts because in order to optimize heavily or high poly assets um, that I'm going to be mentioning, you are going to need Blender knowledge, which unfortunately Unlike some scripts that can do it, there is no way to really optimize specific assets in Unity. Some things you can add, though, to an avatar which follow the exact same steps. So if you are coming back to this video, here are the things you can add. You can add things like glasses. You can add things like piercings that aren't to any moving object that need to be weight painted, such as the lips, cannot add piercings to lips, or eyes because it will not follow the visamine. Add it to things like maybe your nose or ears and stuff like that. You can add ears. I don't know if I mentioned that. Yes, you can add hair to your avatars. It is the exact same step. I add hair in Unity, but again, super unoptimized. So if you don't want to be snatching people's frames like that, then I wouldn't recommend doing this. But for those who have seen my edits, I add my hair in Unity and I'm sharing my secrets, spilling my trade secret. You can add tails, but instead of attaching it to the head armature, which you'll find out later, attach it to, attach it to the hip armature. And that's pretty much about it. Things like cat ears, elf ears, different hairs and stuff like that. You can add in Unity. Anything that is going to be attached to a still like moving object. You can add things like knives to hold in your hand or like a phone to hold in your hand. That stuff is easily attached in Unity. So now that we've gotten past the long introduction, I can finally show you how to do it. Now, so here I have my avatar and I'm going to demonstrate this entire process by adding ears. Mind you, this process is the exact same thing no matter what you want to add. The only difference that may occur is if it has bones versus no bones. Let's say you add a pair of glasses. You can skip the end half of this video because you don't need to add bones into it. But things like ears or hairs or tails, same process, exact same thing, I'm just going to be demonstrating it with ears. Again, if you are adding a tail 
when I show you what armature to attach it to, attach it to the hip one instead. So, you can see here my avatar has ears, and in a theoretical situation that I wanted to switch these ears, I'd need to get rid of them before. So I'm going to click on my ears here, and in this case the ears and the tail are attached to each other. I'm going to right click, and I'm going to click delete. It's going to, 99% of the time, say cannot restructure prefab instance. From there, we are going to open prefab, which is going to put you into this section where your avatar is now in a blue background. What this means is I am able to disassemble my prefab freely. Now, we're going to find the ears and tails, we're going to right click again, and then click delete. That is going to remove everything off of our avatar that we want to be gone. I suggest knowing what you want to get rid of beforehand, and planning this out in your head. Next, we're going to look at the top left hand side where this little arrow is. In order to continue edi any editing on your avatar, you are going to want to leave this scene and return to your normal scene where the ears are now going to be gone. Close your armature for now because we just want this big empty open space. Come down to your files and find the FBX. The FBX for whatever you're trying to import is going to be this little piece of paper with a cube on it. Sometimes there is going to be a unity symbol instead, in that case you can import that, but I'm starting from an FBX and not a already done unity package for assets. So I'm going to take my FBX for the ears I want and I'm going to drag and drop it into my assets. Make sure it's down here or you're dragging and dropping it into a folder so you know where it is. If you drag and drop it and it doesn't show in any of these folders, but you know you imported it, just check out all models and it should be right there. In this case, we're taking the ears and we're dragging and dropping it to the left hand side into the hierarchy system so it should appear right underneath our avatar. Zooming out a bit, we can see for this case the ears are super big. Now I'm going to be teaching you some hotkeys as you see me switching through right now in the middle here. R is for rescaling. And then we're going to go to E, which is for the rotation. And we're going to go W, which is simply moving the object itself. Now for those of you who see this little arrow thing and it is either way above or it is way below and your object is like nowhere near it and it's not in the middle, you can check up here and there's center and global. You can start messing with these things, especially the one on the left does the most, pivot and center. Just start messing with it and whatever one switches your, your object mover into the middle is the one you want to use just for ease of access. If you don't care, you don't care. Now we're going to go into R. We can scale this in four different ways. We can scale it all together, the object as a whole. We can scale it horizontally, meaning we're basically squishing the object. We can scale it vertically, which means it's like flattening the object like a pancake. And we can scale its width. So length, height, and width is basically what we can scale. So as a whole for now, we are going to scale it all the way down into a reasonable size for this avatar. We are going to then hit W and move it up and keep going till there, till you finally have the adjustments you want to make on your avatar. Now you can technically switch the kind of look an ear can give you with rotation and stuff like that. Like I want these ears rotated forward and they're pointing like that. Completely up to you what you want. It doesn't affect much. So, if you ever make a mistake, just know Control z is the way to undo it. So once I have my ears placed to where I want them and everything is has me satisfied, I'm going to look at the hierarchy on the left hand side again, and I'm going to go all the way up to Armature. Where we want these ears to be placed is directly on the head, because that is what it's going to follow. So from here, we're going to click Armature, we're going to drop it down, drop down hips, drop down spine, chest, neck, and head. For those of you who are adding a tail, um, maybe like hip wings, please keep in mind that this is not going to be attached to the head, it's going to be attached to the hips instead. But for ears, hair, glasses, piercings, attach it to the head. So now that it's attached to the head, if we click this little play button here at the top middle of the screen, then we go back to the left hand side after it's loaded, 
which may take a while because God knows Unity is very, very slow. We're going to go to Scene, and we are going to click on our avatar as a whole so that you see all the bones for it, and then click R. You can, or it's not R, sorry, W. We can move it around and see that it's now attached to the head, which is perfect and exactly what we want. Gonna go back to the ears down here, and now we get to add the best thing here, is bones. Now, there's a few things to keep in mind. If you had to delete any hair, tail, ears, anything before adding another one, you are going to want to delete the previous bones. So if we look here, very, very closely, you can see these bones right here are the ear bones from the ears we previously deleted. We do not need those anymore. Make sure to do this. Please optimize your avatars because you are doing this in Unity. So we're going to find the ear bones, which are 99% of the time conveniently named. Control click. So hold down control and click both so that you can select them both at the same time. VRC Fizzbone script on the right hand side. Click the three dots and then click remove component. That means that those fizz bones are no longer applied to the avatar and you just saved yourself maybe 0.5 frames. Now we're going to go back to our ears that we are currently editing and we are going to drop it down. So we're going to drop down the right left hand side of the ears. We're going to drop down armature. We're going to drop down head if we need to. But there should be two conveniently named bones. Half of the time it's L and R, right ear, left ear. It's not going to be head. It's not going to be the main package. It's not going to be any of that. You need to make sure that you are finding it under the armature. You're going to control click both of them again. So they are both select. And then on the right hand side of the screen, add component, BRC fizz bones. And if you looked right here, we just added those fizz bones and they are right there like pretty straight stick lines. Now, we got to change the radius of these fizz bones to be whatever a decent size is. And I'd say about here is a decent size. Not too big, not too small. It'll still be able to interact with any colliders. It's it's a decent it's a decent decent width, I should say. Now, for your forces and your settings, that is completely up to you. I find 99% of the time, and this is under very rare circumstances that I don't use these settings, that the default Fizzbone settings are perfect. The only thing that I might adjust is slightly lowering pull to give it a more wavy effect, but if you are new and you don't know what, you know how to mess with these and you don't want to mess with them too much, the default Fizzbone settings are chef's kiss. They are actually perfect, unlike dynamic bones at the time. The only thing different you might want to do for things like hair, again, slightly pull down, pull, and maybe gravity, but gravity is an iffy thing to deal with, so personal preference, and I won't tell you what you can and can't do. Go into play mode, again, click scene, your main avatar clicked again, and you could start moving it around, and as you see, my ears now have dynamic bones, and they're attached to my head. Now, that's pretty much all you need to do, so if this is like all you want to do, again, you're done with the video, no need to worry about it, but if you added things like hair and such, I can give you a few more pointers, or long floppy bunny ears maybe, stuff like that. Here are a few more pointers. Going back to your bones, control clicking them, let's look back on the right hand side. Let's go over some few things that you might want to go over, some extra tidbits. Again, that's pretty much the basics. I'm going over some extra tidbits if you want to learn something. So max stretch is if your ear is getting grabbed, how far it can stretch if you want your ear to stretch. Grab movement, how much your ear can move when it is grabbed. You can allow posing, meaning that if someone grabs your ear, clicks their trigger, it'll stay in that position. You can, If you don't want that, uncheck it. Allow grabbing means the general grabbing of your ear or your hair. If you want someone to be able to grab that, then just uncheck it so they cannot. You have colliders here for hair, long hair specifically. You do not want your hair clipping into your chest or your shoulders or whatever part of your body it is. You are going to need to add a collider onto that part if there isn't already one. 
And if there is one and you don't want it to interact with that said thing, you are going to have to add it. Not going to explain this in the video. My previous video explains colliders perfectly well. So if you need to know about the whole collider situation, not wanting things to clip, go check out that video yourself. You have a bunch of other things that you can mess with here. If you do want to end up messing with more advanced bone settings, make sure you come to integration type above pull and then click advanced and it gives you one more option to mess with. Now in the circumstance that you see your bones here, right here, you see the bones and they are not moving whatsoever. There is one thing that you can try that is 99% of the time the problem. You can look at endpoint position. On the Y endpoint, add maybe 0.1 to that. That's all you got to add. Test it again. I guarantee you 99% of the time it will move again. And it's just because the asset isn't necessarily seeing itself as compatible with fizz bones. Test it out again and it should be able to move. Root transform. For those of you who knew what dynamic bones were, you had to automatically apply the root to every situation where if I wanted a bone, I'd have to apply the root. If you don't remember any of this, I suggest looking at my older video on how to add objects with dynamic bones. But if you remember that video and your, let's say, your ears, for some reason, the root isn't automatically applied properly, here you can manually apply that root so it is where you want that root to be. That's more for people, uh, more advanced stuff and more for people who knew what dynamic bone did. That's something that you do want to learn. Again, check out the dynamic bone video. Now, whew, that was a lot to go through. And I really hope that helped. And if I did miss anything, I apologize. I didn't want to make this video insanely long, but I wanted to get through as much as I could with this specific topic as well as I could. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. I will try my best to get back to them. And I also hope you all have a wonderful day. Thank you.